<clears throat> Howdy y'all, welcome back to the Cringium channel. Today we're gonna be working on the Dotson yet again, the dad son, the Diada, the Miatson, the 1967 Dotson Roadster with a 1.8 liter BP motor out of a NANB, out of a Miata. As you guys can see, we got a lot of new parts. I mean, a lot of new parts. Right there, we have everything we need to, well, hopefully everything we need to get this thing fully assembled. We got all the glass, we got all the trim, the lettering, the emblems, inserts, the gauges, the lot, literally everything. Before we install all of that, we have to get it painted. Before we get it painted, we have to get it running and driving. So we need to get it running and driving. Right here, we have the custom drive shaft that I had a shop here in Chicago make. On one side is the Datsun differential flange. On the other is the Miata transmission flange, and it is the proper length. That's actually going to allow us to move the car under its own power, which is cool. But we have to be able to stop, so we also have the remaining brake parts to install today. So we have the calipers, we have all of the lines. This car does not have any of the old hard lines remaining on it. So Eastwood also hooked me up with an awesome custom brake line tool. I'll show you that, but um, we're gonna be making the custom hard lines and installing all the brake stuff today. So hopefully by the end of the day, drive shafts in, front brakes are in, rear brakes are in, the front brake lines are done. So we should be able to drive it around the parking lot by the end of the day. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Oh. Also, if you watch it in time, I'm going to be at Chris Fix's Chicagoland meetup in Joliet today. So if you wanna come by, say hello to Chris Fix, to Humble Mechanic, and to me, we'll all be there. custom brake lines. We have, as I said, a care package from Eastwood. This is a tube strainer for brake lines. We have two different types of benders, a cutter, and of course, the flaring tool. If you ever made brake lines and you use the, you know, AutoZone tool that you can rent for 30 bucks, that thing is so terrible. It breaks, it's hard to use, and it's annoying. So we'll be able to flare the brake lines in like five seconds. Anyway, brake line comes out of here. It goes into a, a split. One goes down. And there, the other side goes across, splits, one going back, and one going to the passenger side wheel. I've really never made an entire brake line before, so we'll see how this goes. If you want any of these tools, I'll have a link in the description down to Eastwood. Once you get it on, you just kind of go back and forth and it just straightens it out. Oh, that's so awesome. Look at that, perfectly straight line coming out. It's happening. <laughs> I am. No! Oh, that took like a minute. The line's gonna be coming off the master cylinder. Now I need to add another flare at the end. Actually, almost perfect length. I did the classic mistake of forgetting to put the fitting on before. Ah, oh, God. Why is it so hard to remember to do that? God. Oh, it was a perfect, perfect flare, too. RIP. <laughs> Nice double flare. Now I'm gonna make the line that goes from here to the passenger side, or the driver's side. So. It's gotta do a 90 degree, down five inches, or do like down six inches, along 10 inches.
I'm not sure if you can see this, but I'm, I'm really proud of this. Pretty much finished up the driver brake line. It comes off this T, goes down, runs along the frame rail, curves around and goes into, yeah, you can't see it, goes into the stock hole. I love it, it looks so nice and like so new and clean and just, it fits perfectly and it's awesome. I can't forget to add the fitting this time. Remember the fitting, remember the fitting. Unfortunately, I ran out of fittings, so I was running around two different auto parts stores trying to find the right fitting. I went to like three different stores until I finally got smart, and instead of looking for the specific fitting, I looked at their pre-made brake lines, and sure enough, I found some lines that had the right fitting. The funny thing is that one of these lines with two of the right fittings, so you got one there and one on the other end, and it's cheaper than buying one of the correct fittings. So, if you're looking for brake line fittings, instead of buying these incredibly overpriced single fittings, look at some of the pre-made brake lines that your auto port store has and just harvest the fittings off of those. Little gingium tech tip. Now that I have these fittings, it's time to get back to work. Hell, hell yeah. The first completely custom brake line has been finished. Perfectly goes into the clip point and into this nice new stainless steel soft line. Tell the camera who I saw in Geneva. I saw Chris Fix in Geneva. Just it's so just, crazy. Just driving, just driving staying around. in the rain. Like Chris Fix is in Chicago right now, which is really cool. We're gonna see him on Thursday. Calipers are nice and painted, looking so much better than they did when we got them. The other brake line for the front is finished. Around, behind, down to the uh, T down here, which will go to the rear, it will have a proportioning valve on it, so you can adjust that. Yet again, lines up nicely with that stock clip. Since the car is now in the air, we're gonna go ahead and check this custom drive shaft to make sure it fits. Just like so. Heck yeah, it fits. That's it. Just kinda weird look, I think, yeah. Nice. So now that we have the car up in the air, I'm gonna go ahead and get to making the rear brake line right here. And then we can install the new pads, the rotors, the new calipers, install the drive shaft with the new bolts, bleed the system, and drive it. Fortunately, some of these uh, bolts are being a little stubborn, so we have to introduce them to our friend of propane torch. Hey! Yeah! Nice. All right. Disaster averted. Wow. Well, it seems like the thing that was supposed to be really difficult, making the brake lines, was really easy. And the thing that was supposed to be really easy, just putting the brakes on, is really difficult. The bolts to remove the hub are in those holes. There's no way to fit anything in there. So I have absolutely no idea how to get this off. All right. That was my fault, I'm kinda dumb. I figured there was a big nut holding it onto the spindle, but I couldn't get this part off. I was hammering on this part. Turns out it was just this little cap. So I hammered that off. There's that big nut. Wow. Yep, it was that easy. Wow. <laughs>
Hard lines are all done, obviously. That was finished a while ago. The drive shaft is in and bolted in. The stainless steel line is in back here. This is that new custom brake line we made. The stainless steel lines are in front. And of course, the entire new brake system is in front. New calipers, new pads. These are our aggressive street pads. So they're not track pads. They're not gonna make a bunch of noise, but they're gonna brake nicely. So that's good. All the brake fittings down here are tight. So the next thing to do is to replace the shoes and then bleed the system and park it. I know I said that we were gonna drive it today, but I don't actually wanna take it out to drive without my dad. Um, he had to go to his baseball game because he's a coach, so that's cool. But we don't want to drive without him, so we'll wait. Brake shoes, I don't like doing. I've actually never done them before. So I'm going to take a bunch of pictures and tear it apart, and hopefully I can figure out how to put it back together. <laughs> well, the brake fluid is getting to all the places. Unfortunately, we're having some issues with some leaks. This one is leaking. The other three right here are good. So, chop, chop, chop. There's a lot of leaks over here, as you can tell. None of the bleeders are open, so <laughs> any leak is bad. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's one, two, three, four fittings right there. I think at least three of them are leaking. So, the problem is that these fittings aren't 10 mils. They're whatever standard size under 10 mil. Instead of getting them really tight, I just round them out. So we're gonna go to the store, get a line wrench for whatever's under 10. I don't know. All right, I got the right wrench. I tightened everything a little more. Why do you wanna give it a shot? Ooh, okay, that one's not leaking. Pump it slowly though. Hell yeah. All right, well, that fixed it. That's good, that worried me. Brakes are blood enough. Audrey, you are excused from your duties. You can go make dinner if you want. You're gonna make me go home by myself? I mean, I have to drive separately anyway. <laughs> you still have battery? <laughs> yep, I have discovered the clutch pedal needs to be blood more. Audrey already left, so I'm gonna try to do it myself. Trying to find the right thing I can stick on the clutch pedal. <laughs> it looks like the, probably the slave cylinder is bad. You know, no matter how much I bleed it, it just won't go into gear while it's on. I'm having another issue these rear brakes are way too tight. They were a little difficult getting on. I had to kind of, you know, use a mallet to get the drum on. I figured once we blood it, the piston inside would settle to the correct area. I don't know, place. I literally can't turn it. Well, all I can say is thanks for the internet. Looked it up, there's an adjustment on the back I missed. Duh. Oh, okay. Let's try that. Let's put, put the shoe back on and stuff. That's much better. Cool. I didn't break anything. Hell yeah. So that is that. The dad son is one step closer to driving. Technically, it could drive right now, but it wouldn't be able to stop without stalling because right now the clutch does not disengage. Hopefully it's just the slave cylinder. Hopefully it's not the actual clutch. In the next Datsun video, we will get the slave cylinder. We'll bleed the brakes more, bleed the clutch, get that all working well, and then we're gonna drive it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please give it a like. If you didn't enjoy, please give it a dislike. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. There hasn't been anything with a drift truck because I've been trying to get a welder and a 240 volt plug in the shop. I've gotten both of those things done. So as soon as I have the parts, we're gonna start with the four link. We're gonna get that thing drifting again. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out and goodbye.